Okay guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm excited because I wanted to showcase what I got. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. I'm Michelle and today I wanted to showcase something that I have been waiting to get my hands on for a while now and that is the Art Nouveau Ganze Tombi Kuretake uh, paint palette. I haven't been able to get it in Canada for a while. It hasn't been available on Amazon.ca only in the States and I didn't want to order it from the .com so I finally got my hands on it and I'm super excited. So today I thought we would unbox this, go through it, maybe I'll do some swatching and then I wanted to do uh, like a piece of art with it just so you could see how I actually use it. I'm also going to be using this new book that I got, Beautiful Faces by Jane Davenport. I've just come across this artist and I'll show you the book a little close up but I'll go over it a little more detail in a bit. Um, I've just come across this artist and I love her stuff because she does use like a mixed media and I like that her stuff is a little abstract, a little expressionistic and you know I'm all about that. So I'm going to be using that paint, that book, and then I'm also going to be adding in some of my uh, Prismacolor color pencils because I thought that would be nice for adding uh, some textures and things to it. So let's jump in and get started. Here it is. This is the palette that I got. It's the Art Nouveau. We're going to open it. It does give us um, the color the color names on here, but on this it just gives us the colors and then the name in uh, a non English <laughs> not English words. So Japanese traditional paint for professional artists and crafters and can be used as a gouache and watered down for use as a watercolor ideal for sketch illustration card making and more. Look at these colors. All right, this comes with a little plastic tray on top to protect it. So you can see that all right. Look at these gorgeous colors. So I really wanted this because I really love some of these pinks and purples and this like gray blue is just gorgeous and a nice creamy white, um, which I'm really looking forward to using. And then we have some nice neutrals this um, tan, it looks like tan leather. It's like the color of tan leather, I really like that. Beautiful greens, the nice, this is actually really dark green. This dark teal is gorgeous. I can't wait uh, to use these. I think what we'll do is maybe swatch them out first. Um, sometimes they give you, on the last one they gave you a paper. Oh, so we do, do have this, so in here, you can put a little swatch of the color so you know what it's going to look like, but I think we're going to do a bigger swatch um, so we can have a little more area to show them. It comes in this gorgeous box, so when you're not using it, they're safe, beautiful. But anyways, these are the colors, and so they come in these little pans. Like They're like a, they're not that deep. Oh, this is Potter's Pink. I've been wanting Potter's Pink. That's awesome. Okay. I wonder I like it but this is what they look like I don't know if you can see that sorry my nails are disgusting but um, shallow pans but they're wide which I like because it's easier I feel it like, to get like, your brush full of paint because it's so it's such a wide area to collect the paint from that's why I like them I mean I'm super excited so let's swatch them up um, on paper and see what they look like okay I also wanted to show you um, before we get going um, so there's my Prismacolors we'll just take a quick peek with this book that I was going to use so again it's Beautiful Faces Jane Davenport she's got a whole bunch of books for drawing and painting um, lots of different things on Amazon that you might like I will link this one but she just has lots of great tips and tricks for this one specifically for faces. So using multimedia, how to draw the shapes, just giving you great 
ideas, tips and tricks, um, and how to be better, and what materials are great to use, or what she uses. Just some really nice inspiration. I mean, how can you not love books like this? So this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to draw a little face out, and then we're going to paint it with these paints. Okay. I went ahead and I divided it up this time so I made sure I had enough space for everything and I've already labeled them out just so you can see what color it is as I go along and what I might do is just um, put some music on and maybe even speed it up just so it doesn't take so long but I'm just going to do a little swatching so enjoy the swatching. I think it's finally dry and I am loving these colors you guys I'm gonna do a little close-up so you can see them all hopefully you can see that all right well look how gorgeous gorgeous I can't wait to paint something with all of these look at those colors so you can see how they um, I tried to get so you could see that, like uh, the washed out version and then the pigmented version. Still a little bit wet here, um, but I'm impatient. <laughs> um, there's some really beautiful colors that I can't wait to try. Uh, they do, I don't know if you can see it in this light, but you can see how they do dry a little more matte. And this paint really is a combination, um, like a halfway point between gouache and watercolor. So you can use it a little more opaque and then you can water it down for more of a watercolor effect and I think that's why I like um, I love this paint so much is because it is a bit versatile and you, you don't know what you're going to end up with like you can see here in this mauve taupe these beautiful little dark like edges that come and you just and then even in here in this potter's pink you can see there's little variations in the color sometime down here in this beige gray you can see, like, look at these beautiful little blooms that come out. So I'm really excited to use this paint. This might take me a few days to actually <laughs> do the 
do the painting, but I wanted to get the swatches done today and I'm actually now really excited to paint something else because I just love the way these paint look this paints look. So I'm trying to decide what color story to use and I might just pick you know, just use one of these lines, like maybe this one, as my color palette so that I don't have to think about it because it's kind of cool. Like, either any one of these lines could be a really cool color palette because I have a hard time picking colors sometimes because I like them all and I'm, and I'm not daring like I would normally never pick something bright like that or that or probably even like this, but I think that's a color that can really make a painting stand out with some little touches so maybe I'll just do that and make it easy for myself <laughs> maybe I'll make a painting with each one of these color palettes who knows stay tuned <laughs> maybe you'll see it in some further video but anyways here's our swatches of the colors and the next step will be to get started on our our painting I wanted to show you the difference between the palette that I just got the Art Nouveau and then here is my original palette, which is a lot more colors, but you can see there's a lot more, um, they're a little more primary, a little more basic. There's some metallics in here, which is nice. This is the palette I've been working with so far, which has some beautiful colors in it, but you can see the difference um, with the Art Nouveau. It just has some really specific colors, um, some more muted tones that I really like working with that I'm really excited to try. But between the both of these now, I have a ton of colors and I don't think I need to buy any more of these. Well, never say never because you guys know how it is with art supplies. Something shiny catches your eye and then you have to try it. So they do have some really nice, um, I've seen some graphite colors that I really like. There's like a small palette of graphite colors, like grayed out. And that's probably the like, only other Kiritaki paint that I might need to have still. but. Right now, I'm just excited to play with that one. But that's the original one. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos where I've used that stuff, that's the palette I've had in the past. So you can see, you can compare the colors. All right, so um, I'm gonna do a quick little voiceover here, but then once I'm done talking, I will put some music on so you can just enjoy and watch. I've had to speed up uh, the footage quite a bit because this did take me probably a couple hours to work on this painting, but I didn't want to put you through the torture of the whole long process. So um, I did start off with doing several layers uh, with the watercolors. Um, so you can just see the kind of process where I just kind of keep layering um, the different colors over and over. I'm trying to put it, I'm trying to put different um, tones in the skin, not just skin color, but I'm adding some greens and some reddish browns and I've got pink in the cheeks. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing. Just a disclaimer. I'm not a professional artist. I'm just getting back into art this year again. If you've been following me, you know that. And I just play around and I try things and hope for the best and hope that it works out. And I learn things as I go. So I could be doing a lot of things wrong there could be some of you looking at this going, why Why are you doing it that way? What is, how does that make sense? Why are you using those colors? Why are you, why are you using the materials in the way that you are? I'm just doing what comes uh, instinctively to me, intuitively, and I'm just making things up as I go along, and it's all a big experiment, and it's all playing around and having fun, because that's the whole point of being creative and making art is just to have fun and find the joy in it. And so, like I said, I'm just going to be layering um, up as I go as things dry and I see where I need to add more paint Then I'm just going to add more. Um, this, this painting just, I didn't really have an idea of how it was going to look at the end. I knew I wanted to do a woman's face and I did a quick pencil sketch just freehand of her features and kind of just a quick outline of her hair. And then I thought I'll just paint it. My thought process was to lay down some paint in different areas of different colors and tones and and see where the blooms happened and mix with water and let the magic happen with the watercolor. And then my goal was to, <clears throat> sorry, my idea after that was once I was done with the watercolor would be use 
my colored pencils to then add some detail and texture. And then once I was done with the uh, colored pencils, then I would get out my black fine liner and do my uh, little details and outlining that I like to do just to kind of define things a little bit. So that was my thought process going in. I didn't know how it was going to turn out. As you can see, I didn't even draw a dress on her, but I ended up painting it. And I love the way the shape turned out because it looks like she has big puffy sleeves in a dress. Um, and I did use the color palette of that one line down my swatch book, which is a color palette that I would never normally have been drawn to. Um, my thought process was that I would do... Uh, big like roses or flowers in her hair um, so in my mind it was going to be like pink and red roses um, but the red that I use I think it's vermilion um, ended up being such a vibrant orange color and I added a bit of yellow to it that they ended up looking like peaches so I kind of rolled with it again this is kind of the magic of working this way is you kind of have a loose idea and then as you go things change um you can see that I kind of I I skipped a part uh filming when I was adding the orange um I forgot to hit record on that so you missed that whole part but as you can see they look like they look like oranges or peaches and I've never uh been one to use orange in my art at any point I think in my life because I don't really do a lot of warm color like oranges and yellows are just not my my thing but I really love the way these colors turn out and the contrast of the greens and the oranges and the browns um, I actually am really I'm really pleased with the colors it's just it's a really it's a departure for me it's kind of out of my comfort zone but I'm really glad that I've tried it and so here's the lesson in getting out of your comfort zone and trying new things is that you can discover new and fun stuff that you never knew that you could even make in your art. So I'm really happy with the way the watercolor part turned out. You can see it's just, it's very whimsical and fun. It's expressionistic and abstract and not meant to be realistic at all. Um, and I love the way that the paint part turned out. So now I'm just adding with my colored pencil, adding some more shading and some more details. And I'm just going to play around with it. So um, I think I will stop talking now and let you enjoy. I'll put some music on and you can see my whole process. Uh, I definitely have sped it up a lot. And then I'll show you the end result at the end. So enjoy.
Alright, well, I have no idea if that was helpful or if you enjoyed that or not, but it was fun to do. So if you did enjoy that, I would love it if you give a little like and subscribe, perhaps. Um, and I'm also going to do another video coming up with five more books uh, for art inspiration. It will include the one that I was using today. So stay tuned for that if you love art book hauls and you need more art books in your life. Because can you never have enough? Because there's always something else to get inspired by, right? Am I right? So anyways, thanks for coming along. It was great to have you. I hope we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.